So here we have YouTuber Atheist Burns and this likely bait video. Atheist can answer these 25 questions. Now he's got a little preamble before the questions and I'm going to let play, but it's generally nonsensical, creates some odd premises that I don't agree with the verbiage of, and that actually extends through the entire video. So I'm going to let his uh, intro play and then we're going to get to the questions. Atheists fear Lucifer's 25 questions so much that all of these guys will avoid them. So I challenge all atheists to answer Lucifer's 25 questions like Martin Luther challenging the papacy. And it would be preferable if the answers were through a video so that I could make a response video scoring all of them. First things first, this is my definition of theist and atheist. Theists believe that existence was created by a living thing metaphysically. Atheists believe that existence was created by a non-living thing physically. And skeptics don't believe in anything and question theists and atheists. So I'm really speaking about the scientific atheist community, which blindly believes in the physical world religious dogma. And the educational system indoctrinated them into believing it, because it's basically the only other option to God. Now after these questions, you'll see that atheists don't really have any answers at all. So I'll play the skeptic for this, where the truth is a blank sheet of paper with nothing on it. And See what I mean? It's just been kind of a complete word salad. I'd like to hear the atheists' answers with evidence to convince me into believing their worldview. Question one. How is there something rather than nothing? There has to be something because we exist. We can't exist in nothingness. Ergo, the only way we could be around to question that is that we exist and that other things exist. Nonsensical question. Question two. How did matter come from no matter, or can you elucidate how something physical just exists? Matter and energy being the same thing, it's an intrinsic property of the universe. I mean, that's, that's as far as it needs to go. Question three. How did the physical thing change if there was nothing else to react to? What do you mean by the physical thing? Was this part of an answer to the last question that I didn't give the answer you were wanting to, and thus this question addresses that particular answer you were scripted for? Nonsensical question. Question four. Can you show me a single physical thing being created, and can you explain how it is created? There was an entire television program called How It's Made that was dedicated to showing how things are made, i.e. how we create various things that are known to be made, known to be created, known to be designed. But you can't extrapolate that to go to the entire universe, because not only does the differentiation between created and not created break down at that stage, but there is no evidence that the universe is created. And I only bring that up, not that it's intrinsically in the question, but that's because that's where that question inevitably leads. So, yes, I could show you an infinitesimal number of things being created. Question five. Is there a bottom to the physical world, or are all things made of things infinitely? When you get down to the quantum level, you start reaching practical limits. So, yes, but... You know, you reach technical limits, I should say, but in the practical level, no. I still don't see where, where, where the question matters, what value it has. Question six. Do the physical things collectively make up one thing, or is everything separate, or even something else? Is a dump truck carrying a bunch of gravel one thing? What about when it dumps out the gravel? Is it still one thing, or is it now a gravel pile and a dump truck? And the gravel pile, is it one thing or is it a whole lot of small rocks? It depends on how you classify things. Question 7. Can 2D even exist in the physical world, given that it has no thickness at all? We would define a piece of paper as two-dimensional, even though it has three dimensions. It depends on how practical that application is for you, you know, for what you're doing. So... Maybe if you classify things a certain way, don't see the relevance. Question 8. How does time and the separation of events exist in the physical world? Time is an intrinsic property of entropy. I mean, it's a weird concept that we can't really wrap our brains around. 
but we at least perceive it, so we apply a name to the phenomena that we observe of things having, you know, cause and effect, past, a planned future, you know, it's, it's a fascinating thought, but again, what value does this question have? Question 9. Does the past and the future exist simultaneously, or are we always living in the peak of time? Yes, no, maybe so, depends on how you look at things. That's, that's philosophy right there at, that, at this point. It's not something you can just hardcore peg down with, with an oscilloscope. Question 10. What proof for God should be accepted, given hallucinations exist? Something tangible and indisputable. I don't necessarily know what that is, but a deity certainly would. And it would be just absolute fact, yes, this is it. No one would be able to doubt it because there would be no capability to doubt this piece of evidence, this proof. Question 11. Is knowledge like mathematics discovered or invented by people? Knowledge is what we describe information we've collected about the universe. That's the term we use for it, so we discover facts that we would call knowledge. You know, we, we invent these concepts, we invent the term to describe these things, but you know, depends on what you define knowledge and mathematics as, as far as language goes. I mean, that's all this continues to be is language games. People. Question 12. Does existence entirely make sense, or is it partially or entirely nonsense? Existence makes as much sense as our limited senses can interpret it. You know, we're, we're on this planet. Life's been evolving for several billion years on this world. We've got the senses we do to, to detect the outside world, to figure, you know, to see, to hear, to feel, the brain developed to think about things. It makes as much sense as our brains can make of it. That's as far as the question can be answered. Question 13. How are the laws of logic and physics just a coincidence that remain constant? Laws of physics are descriptive, not prescriptive, and laws of logic are very similar. These are methodologies that work, or they're descriptions of things that are just effectively solid. That, again, that are inherently constant. Uh, constant. So, nonsensical question? Question 14. Can humans explain absolutely everything without God? I believe we could. If you're asking at this moment, yes, but still no, because the God hypothesis is just a fill in the gaps, you know, blank statements like, oh, can't explain this, ergo deity. Just because we haven't figured out a physical mechanism for something or understood it fully doesn't mean that's not there. So, yes, I believe we can. If not now, than in the future, presuming we survive that long. Question 15. What is the peak of technology and the final invention, if not existence in its entirety? Is this implying that eventually we're just going to create a universe? I mean, again, nonsensical. How am I supposed to know what, at what point we suddenly can't develop more technology? That's, that's such a weird question. Question 16. Could a random series of events build a pyramid, considering that that's what you think created life? Straw man, one does not think a truly random set of events created life. There's a, uh, one could call it a method to the madness. There's, 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 there's intrinsic properties, certain rules that things were behaving by. Uh, so, no, and we don't think that's how life was started on the planet. So, straw man, nonsensical question. Question 17. How did life come from non-life? Life is how we describe material that behaves a certain way. These structures, these things, these, you know, we describe them as organisms, as, as living things that meet certain criteria that we define as life. You know, viruses, depending on how you classify life, don't count as life, but they react like living things do. You know, again, this is, this is all word games. But, you know, if you want to get down to the root of it, as I constantly say, chemicals doing what chemicals do. You get the right chemicals together, they start behaving a certain way, 
things keep on going, all of a sudden you got something that people would recognize as life. Question 18. How did death come to exist immediately through the first life, rather than it being immortal? Entropy. Natural processes that, barring odd examples, things, you know, do die. There is a failure point. There are flaws in the chemical s structure, you know, chemical system. You know, it can't just run forever. You know, in the grand scheme, it's perpetual through reproduction, yes, but the individual organisms have limits. That's just how the chemistry works. Question 19. How did the first life just so happen to be able to create more life by itself? Nonsensical question. You know, that, that, that'd be a field of research, but also I'd go back to chemicals doing what chemicals do. You know, I can I can come up with all kinds of hypotheticals on, you know, early, you know, reproduction of just things eventually just reaching a point where it's like, oh, I'm just going to break off here. Oh, look, now I'm suddenly two of this weird uh, creature. Cool, huh? It doesn't really matter. Like, it does. Origin of life is fascinating. But... In the grand scheme, it's just another facet, but we know chemicals do what they do, and if chemicals can reproduce now, you know, and they duplicate, we can get these long polymer chains, you can get them back in primordial times. It's not a hard concept. Question 20. How did life withstand death and continue rather than discontinue? It survived. Quote Jurassic Park, life uh, finds a way. And this goes back to question one. If no life on Earth had succeeded, we wouldn't be here to be questioning this. So it really doesn't matter. It just survived. How are you still alive? How many things could have killed you in however many years you've been alive? But it didn't happen, and you're fine. You eat, you breathe. You know, you, 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 you stay alive. Question 21. How did the first life gain consciousness and the ability to do things? The first stuff we would define as life likely had nothing remotely close to consciousness. It was still just chemical reactions doing what they do. But it was a nice compact little thing that we would kind of recognize as that kind of looks like a cell. You know, maybe not even that far. Because again, it depends on how you classify life, but consciousness is an emergent property of, of complex thought of brains. So, nonsensical question. Question 22. How does the mind and imagination exist in the physical world? Neurons. The brain. It's a really interesting thought. Yeah, I'll acknowledge that it's a really interesting thought about the idea of the mind. But it's chemical processes. Again, chemicals doing what chemicals do. Question 23. If life can so easily come to be and remain in many different environments, where are all of the aliens? Let me sum this one up. Space big. Travel time long. Life scattered on many island. Island far away. Long time to come visit. It's an interesting thought, as a lot of these are. But there's a lot of dead-ass rock out there. Places that are not suited for life as we know it. You know, we're fortunate enough that this planet happened to be having to develop the right conditions that life could spawn on it. That's probably not that common of a process in the grand scheme, but still common enough. But we're just not sure yet. The math says one thing, what we observe says another, but we can only observe a tiny fraction of the universe. A tiny, tiny fraction. For anything that would remotely be, be, be you know, a sign of life. And only then, complex life up to a technological level similar to or above ours. So, again, a nice thought experiment, but an irrelevant question. 
act like we're supposed to have all these answers and that not having those answers somehow proves a deity is ridiculous. Question 24. What is the purpose of life? Irrelevant question. It's whatever you want to make it or 42. Whichever you prefer. Life is just life. We exist. If you want to apply purpose to stuff, presuming that you're a complex enough creature to understand purpose, which humans generally are, you know, we, we figure that out for ourselves. Question 25. Do you think that AI is an immortal metaphysical form of life that would be accepted as a god 2,000 years ago? If not, how is this not a god? It does not age, it can create metaphysical lifelike story worlds, and it can talk to millions of people at once. Because there's no supernatural component to it. If someone wants to treat it as a deity, that's on them. But by the definition of a deity, of a god, quote-unquote, it lacks the supernatural aspect. AI is just really fancy code piecing shit together from back-end databases. Just like everything else out there. It's just specialized to look human. If you want to dumb it down. And if so, do you believe in God? So those... No... So Lucifer's 25 questions were hopefully you provided a greater answer than yes or no, or I don't know, considering that I... Yeah, most of my answers were nonsensical question, moving on. So, you want to call that a cop-out, go ahead, but I mean, most of this stuff had no value. And I know I've said that this entire thing, but there was truly minimal value in most of those questions. I would like to be convinced of the non-living physical world. But unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get high quality answers. I think atheists are the type of people that go to a debate to tell others that they're wrong. And then when the others ask them what answers do they have instead, they simply say, I don't know. And this is what I would call the atheist's super sword of that's wrong and super shield of I don't know. Now, why I mention that is because when atheists challenge my worldview, I give them answers. But when I ask them about theirs, they always have the most eloquent way of evading my questions. Because the questions are of poor quality. Meanwhile, your answers that you give are more than likely just God did it, God did it, supernatural, God did it. Got magic powers, God did it, God can do anything except these things he can't do, but he totally can do them, but he just doesn't because cause he's God. You know, I don't know anything about you, dude, and like I said, this, this feels like major bait, but whatever. You know, ask proper questions. Not play a bunch of attempted gacha games, very weak gacha games that left me scratching my head more than anything else. I'm not stammering around it because I can't come up with something. I'm stammering around the words because it's like, how do I accurately describe what is so off about this? Let's let him finish his video, though. As they pretend to believe in nothing whilst simultaneously being completely biased against one option and for the other. And here's how I came to that conclusion. Atheists are not being converted anywhere, as once you realize it's all nonsense, you can't make yourself believe something that you don't think is real. Can you show me the creation of a single physical thing? Who's the one believing in nonsense? Man can create great things out of wood, steel, concrete, and many other things. Have you another point to make yourself look stupid? That's remolding matter, like creating a sandcastle is just remolding the sand of the beach into the concept of sandcastle. Okay, bro, is, is, is this 25 questions? You got your questions done. Now are you just going to read off some comments and just ramble? I mean, it's your video. You can do what you want, but I, I don't know. And I know I'm one to say I would have tightened this up, but for a video that's this produced, I would have just tightened it up and left it at that, then done a follow-up to explain yourself. Maybe you get somewhere at the end, though. Don't be condescending, especially when you don't know what you're talking about. Now, can you show me the creation of a single physical thing? You mean, can a man make anything out of nothing? No, that would require magic, and as an adult, I don't believe magic is real. Show me the creation of any physical thing, or your worldview of this world being physical comes from magic, which contradicts what you just said about not believing in magic. 
I mean, these are all, you know, while snarky, completely valid responses. Because that's what it boils down to. A proposition of, ma of magic and miracles breaking reality versus what we actually see in the universe. It's that simple. You believe a god of some kind made everything out of nothing with some kind of magic. Did you choose your religion after researching among the 10,000 other religions, or did you just happen to be born into and told from being a baby that it's true? We get it. You've got a bunch of the stock atheist replies. Yeah, they can get tiring. Y you seem a little upset by that. I mean, just, dude. Do you see how they just can't answer a simple question? I saw valid answers in there, right? Those, there were answers. Then, where your, your inevitable turnaround got addressed immediately because we know what's coming. Right? This stuff is super predictable because you all have a script you run off of. Apologetics is a load of shit about their worldview. And there are so many atheists commenting on my videos that have no answers at all. They blindly believe in the physical world religious dogma. So I ask, can you physically touch anything in your dreams? That's a very interesting thought experiment. Irrelevant to the way reality actually is. I mean, I'm not going to lie. That's one hell of an interesting thought experiment given that this is happening in your brain. But no, since the act of touching something is actually defined as your body actually making physical contact with something, no, you're not touching anything in a dream, but you might think you are. So your perception says you are, even if you aren't. Much like you can feel like you're falling when you're not. Based on the fact that a metaphysical world does exist as your dreams which you can touch physically and believe to be real, it's safe to assume that we could be- You can't touch a dream. It's a phenomenon that happens inside the mind, which is again an emergent property of brains. ...in a metaphysical world created by a living thing, or a physical world created by a non-living thing. Then, the metaphysical world is a possibility, and the physical world is a possibility. But they just keep claiming that the physical world is axiomatically true until proven to be otherwise. Which is the exact same logic that a theist uses to claim that God exists, and it's just axiomatically true. And that's... But the physical world is actually shown to exist. So... While it may look like it's similar logic, and functionally, yeah, the difference is the actual proof factor of claim of Magic Man versus every last thing you can see and feel around you and have the entirety of your existence. Not how the truth works. The truth is a blank sheet of paper with nothing on it. And if you want to put the physical world on it, you have to prove that it's physical. And they can do so by... No, dude, the, the truth is what the facts are. ...by showing me how any physical thing can just come to be, including the first physical thing. If they can't do that, the physical world is uncertain and just a possibility, like the metaphysical world. And if they really want to prove that their worldview is true, they can answer every single one of Lucifer's 25 questions. And no, I'm not a Christian. I'm a Pythagorean, panpsychist, panentheist, or a savior. And if you want to know what that means, and all of my answers to Lucifer's 25 questions which are congruent... N no, I'm not interested at all, dude. Just, I'm not. Now, again, you provided some pretty interesting thought experiments. Like, I genuinely mean that. Some of this stuff is interesting to think about. But the answer is unknowable, unknowable at this time, irrelevant, or a personal matter of personal opinion. Seemed like a cool guy though, so no hate, but yeah, I just found this whole exercise to be not what I was expecting, or maybe it was exactly what I was expecting. I don't know. Whatever case, I'm out.